One look around an event like this and you might be forgiven for thinking, hang on, all this exotic machinery, that's fine until it goes wrong. When it does go wrong and you need a new bit, what do you do? Throw it away. No, there are actually companies specialising in supplying parts for this kind of car. One of the bigger companies doing that is US Automotive Limited. Of that, Steve is here with me in front of this rather stunning machine we'll talk about in a minute. You are one of several manufacturers doing this. It's quite a big operation, isn't it? There's a lot of demand for this, bringing these parts in. Well, strangely enough, you're absolutely right. Uh, in the UK at the moment, there are around about 90,000 registered US automobiles and that doesn't include things like the hot rods in the garages and other cars that are under construction. Right, so you and your colleagues have been a bit crafty here. It's the usual story of spotted a market. In fact, you were already kind of in this business. Well, I've actually been in the business since 1974 and Pete, who works for us as well, has been in since uh, 1976. So overall, we have got quite a lot of experience and that's very important in this sort of business. So you've been up and running doing this for a couple of years or so. How does it actually work? How do you trace the parts? Uh, well, we use a lot of people in the States. I mean, our experience, as I've said, is quite important um, but overall we have a couple of guys in the States and their job is literally to go and search for parts I mean, we've, we've managed to find things like a brand new windshield for a 1958 Packard. Where did things like that come from? Who's got them? Well there are specialist people in the States who actually like stockpile this sort of thing. We've got another guy, he's got 40 Chrysler 300, which is a rare car anyway, in his backyard. That's quite a handy thing to have in your yard. So you've got those contacts, you bring the stuff over. These things aren't exactly delicate, though, are they? In internally, mechanically? Uh, no, most engines are pretty robust. The American engineering, let's be honest about it, is pretty agricultural in its original design. So, yes, they very rarely break, but fortunately they do, otherwise I don't have a job. <laughs> From time to time it's nice if they do have a problem. Well, absolutely right, but we don't ever wish anything on our customers like that. But if they do have a problem, we're here to help. What's the number one thing that people come to you for? Basically service parts, I would say, things like oil filters, spark plugs, brake pads, things to keep their car running on a daily basis. I have noticed, just looking around the event today, it is one of those occasions where everybody seems to be friends. You come in thinking, God, all these strangers, but they're so friendly, you must know a lot of people. Well, yes, I think that's one of the things that we really find enjoyable about it. I mean, we do class the customers as friends. We're there to help them, obviously to make money as well, because we sell parts, but we do try and keep, our, keep the customers friends. Yeah, but I don't think he's all that friendly and his mates here, because he's just confided to me earlier that he recognises people by their car and not by their name. Well, yeah, that's absolutely true. Unfortunately, my name my head is not for names, it's for numbers. Just talk to me about the machinery, because some of it looks... It's kind of a combination of being enormous, but they're little spindly kit to get it out to the wheels. They're, they're quite exotic looking machines. Are they very expensive and difficult to run? Uh, hot rods can be very cheap or they can be very expensive. It just depends on how sophisticated you want to go. I mean, a vehicle like this is quite a costly machine, but you can build a hot rod probably for £1,500, £2,000 and still have a lot of fun in doing it. And that's what a lot of people really go for, the fun. This is a bit special, this thing behind us. I know it's got some rather elaborate paint. It's not just mean black, which it may look right now. There's something a bit more to it than that. Yeah, as well as being black, it's got something known as ghost flames. The paint is rather special, and when the, hit, like, the light hits it at a certain angle, it sort of like fluoresces, and you can see the flames right the way across the body. But it's only really under special light, so I don't suppose the viewers will be able to see very much. There's no doubt, is it, that image is very important to you boys? Is it everything? Uh, image isn't everything, but yes, it does make a lot of difference. I believe we've been quite successful because we do try to give something back to the customers. We like to show them lovely vehicles, we like to sell them their parts at a good price and give them a really good service. Because in the whole American car, the whole street rod and hot rod thing, they have to look fantastic, but underneath they've got to have the right engine, so it's also presumably about horsepower and that feeling of driving something with major power. Yeah, obviously a lot of people like the powerful feeling. Um, it doesn't have to be like a really powerful car. A lot of American cars are standard, can be very, very enjoyable. And of course they're very practical, certainly the modern ones anyway. Yeah, what would happen if you pulled up here and say, a nice mini Metro? I'm afraid nice car. I, I, yeah, maybe, but not really my cup of tea. Yeah. I couldn't really help you with the mini Metro, I'm afraid. Steve, thank you very much for talking to us. You're very welcome. <laughs> Cheers.